Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in, everybody. Let me get my... Hold on one second. Let me grab my um, something for my arm. Actually, it's right here. Just need this for my arm, and then I'll be right on the camera. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome in, everybody. I have, like, the driest little elbow. If there was ever a drier elbow in the world, it would. It just doesn't exist. It does not exist right now, guys. <laughs> I was putting some lotion on my elbow. Sorry. For some reason, I have like. I lean on this side, like when I'm um, like watching my iPad and stuff. Oops. Um, and so when I lean on it, for some reason, this elbow gets dry. It's. It's the damnedest thing. I don't know. But welcome into the live, everybody. It's good to see you. It's good to see y'all. We made it. We made it to Friday. Well, Vincent kind of did. He's asleep already. I don't know what happened to him. We lost one. <laughs> we lost a good one. We got a fallen, a fallen soldier back there. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Tanya. We do talk true crime daily here. So welcome. Welcome on in. Welcome aboard. I saw Jan was in here. Who else do we have in here? I just saw that blue. That's why I was like, who's that blue? Who do we have? Jan or Isabel? <laughs> But um, welcome in, everybody. Hopefully you guys had a great week. You know, great week, uh, great weekend. Hopefully you have some great weekend plans. Does anybody have anything fun they're going to do? Great. Oh, doodle mom, grandkids will be here till nine. We'll boot them out the door. It's 20 minutes after. They're probably still in there saying, but we just need one more thing from grandma. <laughs> hey, Ashley. Hey, Otto. I loved hanging out with my grandma. Hey, ladybug. Hey, Alar. She was the best. She was the best. I had the best grandma. She would always just, she always wanted to spoil her grandbabies, you know? And that's what you're supposed to do. You're here talking to a friend. Oh, Cheryl, look at you. Look at you, Cheryl. Got plans doing things without us. We'll be there. We'll be, we'll be there. We'll be in Canada. Pickle me on though. Hey, welcome in. No, so no, well, no new, no big news on Elijah Vu. Um, just his parent or his, I'm sorry, his mom, mother and the I thought it was the mom's boyfriend, but I don't, I'm getting all kinds of weird stuff with that guy. So there's some, there is some new stuff, but there isn't some new stuff at the same time, but they did get a rain today. Um, so I thought we would probably cover that tomorrow because I have a bunch of cases to cover with you guys. So I thought we would do them all at once. There's Jan. <laughs> I bought clicked on Jan again. Hey, Amanda, welcome in everybody. I know I'm slow. Everyone's probably like, would you get on with it? Margaret and Catherine. <laughs> Once I start, I can't stop. It's like, what is that? Pringles? <laughs> hey, truth and justice. And then we've got, we've got everybody in here. Linda, Therese, we got, we got the whole clans coming in. Hey, L Beam, welcome in everybody. How's everybody's doing tonight? Oh, it's full. It's a full moon. Oh no. I can believe that. Okay. Okay. That's probably, I, I couldn't even. Okay. So. I was doing my live and then I got onto YouTube and I shouldn't have got back onto YouTube because then I was in Dietz's live for a minute and I'm sitting there, I'm chatting in the chat and I look up and it says like, I was, was it like 9.15 I was supposed to be on? It said like 9.08 or something. I was like, whoa, what happened? Like I lost 20 minutes of my life. I don't know where it went, but it was good. It was a good conversation. So, <laughs> man, you're still on pain and pain. How long has it been, Ashley? It's been at least like a month. Hey, Alicia, welcome in. How are you doing, Alicia? How are you feeling? Hey, Cat's Life. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Olivia. You guys saw my, my arm last night. It was bad looking. It looks a little better today. The full moon means my cats will be crazy all night. Look at mine. <laughs> Mine's out like a light. He must He must not care about the full moon. He don't care. I usually don't have him back here with me. He usually wakes up and he leaves, but Mr. Rocky's here tonight. My pride and joy, my one and only. I will, I will never own another male um, animal after he's gone. So he's my baby, but we are going to get into um, some discussion tonight about the um, Audrey Cunningham case. Now, when, who was it? One of you guys was a DM. Might have been DM. I don't see her in here. But one of you guys came in last night and was like, Nancy Grace just dropped another, like, just, just dropped something with this case. And I'm like, what? Because we had watched, like, two episodes by her. And I was like, surely not. She is so on top of this case. Like, she came in kind of late. And then she flew on in. <gasps> All your groupies are here. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome. Even Rocky. 
Even Rocky's here. I can't believe he's back there. Nauseous a lot, but medicine seems to be helping. Good, Alicia. At least the medicine's helping. I'm, uh, uh, man, I couldn't imagine. I, I take a lot of medications and I hate taking medications. It's the worst. If anybody can get away with it without taking them, it's me. Don't, not you, but me. I do that. I'm one of them, like, I pick. I'm like, oh, probably should take this one. I, I'm so bad. I, I need to be more regulated. <laughs> that's why she, Stephanie said, oh, my gosh, that's why. Uh, the full moon's why her toddler's acting like she had a, spo a spoonful of sugar. Yeah. Well, tell her, give me some of that energy. I remember being a kid and then, you know, people tell, like, people saying that to me. And I'm like, what do you mean? And now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, I know what you mean. So um, there's a bunch of different cases that I want to cover with you guys over the weekend. Um, so I'll be popping on here and there because there's a lot. So um, we have, let's see what I have up. Do I have, I don't, let me see. Let me see what I got because we went over some last night. So I don't want to double them up. Okay. So last night we went over Harmony Montgomery. We went over Audrey's case, um, Madalena Kojakari and Elijah Vu. I didn't go live this morning with Madalena Kojakari's case because I was so frustrated with that case. So I'm going to show you what happened today in court because it was, it's a lot. So, and we'll talk about it probably on tomorrow's night's live too. But, um, I don't know if you guys remember me talking about Madalena Kojakari last night, the little girl from North Carolina, um, Corn Cornelius, North Carolina, Cornelius right here is our picture. Let me see if I can get a better one of her. Oh, that's her mom. That's terrible. But um, there's a picture of her. So her mom was supposed to go to court today for an arraignment. I've been waiting. Uh, we've all been waiting. That's been following this case. We've been waiting on this arraignment for a year and a half. It seems like um, her mom, if she would have went to court today because she's only charged with failure to report a child missing. Apparently that's not that big of a deal. I thought it was, I thought it's a huge deal. But apparently, if you spend so much time in jail, like she has 14 months, if you go in and you walk in and you just say, I'm guilty, you could be let out that day without even reporting or not without even producing your child. So instead of, I guess, um, God is working in my favor today or whoever the higher power is because she refused to show up to court. So instead of getting out today, like she could have just showed up to court. She, it could have been so easy for this woman, probably showed up to court. They all, they can't put her on like probation where she has to report because it's such a small, like small charge, I guess that she could have went and went back to Madova. She could have went and left the country, like with her mom, none the wiser left us all here, but she didn't show up for court. I, I don't, I guess a higher power is telling us something because she's staying in jail now. Now what I'm thinking is. Um, and I was listening to this video. They said they think that she might've had like a deal going and she was supposed to come in and plead guilty. And then she got scared. And I was thinking that and I do think she's scared to say she is guilty of failure to reporting her child. Cause I think she thinks then they're going to tack on like another charge to her. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, wait a minute. Are you guys playing with me? Like one of those deals? Cause it's a, a too good to be true. Too good to be true deal right here. She's in jail. So she just refused to go to court. So she, her jail isn't like some jails are at the courthouse. Some jails aren't. And I think this one, you have to like actually be picked up. But the judge was like, okay, well, I thought that he would put in a plea for her. Right. But he didn't. He said, we'll readdress it. I don't know what's going to happen in this case. First heads need to be rolling as Nancy Grace would say. Um, but it says here that, you know, the mother missing Cornelius girl, Madalena Kojikari, did not show up for her hearing scheduled on Friday. The judge said her hearing would be continued to a later date. I think I have a video. Yeah, let's listen to this video because this video um, really detailed it. So last night we were listening to this um, station and a lady came on, was an attorney, and she's like, if she just goes in tomorrow and pleads guilty to failure to report a child, even though she doesn't have to produce the child, she can walk out the same day. And I was like, we heard that last night. And I said, what did they do? What the hell did we just hear? So I rewound it. And then I felt like another gut punch. So this morning when they said she didn't show up to court, I was like, did the judge put in a not guilty plea for her? But he didn't. He didn't put in any plea. So what this lady is going to tell us that was talking to us last night, the, the attorney they, they speak with, 
um, she th seems to think that maybe Diana Kojikari had some sort of a deal. I don't know what kind of deal. Um, and then maybe whenever she was supposed to go in today, she was supposed to like plead to guilty to that deal and whatever is in the deal. And she decided maybe she didn't want to do that. So that's what this lady's thinking is. So we'll watch this video and then we'll move on to the Nancy Grace um, video. Always the arraignment of Diana Kojakari. She is the mother of Madalena Kojakari, the missing girl from Mecklenburg County. Diana Kojakari due in court today, but chose not to show up. I have a question, actually. Is it just because the states are different? I mean, Lori Vallow couldn't get away with this. She had to produce the children. She was supposed to be there for an arraignment on charges that she failed to report the girl missing, but she refused to go into the court hey, and the hearing was adjourned almost immediately. Our Jason hey, Bucket was hey, Jesus loves me. live outside the courthouse tonight. Jason, you spent the day talking with experts about this no-show. What did they say? Well, Molly and Jamie, I was there in the courtroom this morning with about a dozen other members of the media waiting for Diana Kojikori to show up. And just like many folks at home, when she didn't, we were left wondering, what does this mean? Court schedule showed Diana Kojikori set for an in-person arraignment Friday. But when the hearing began, she wasn't there. The defendant chooses not to come. Can't force her to be here. Yeah, you can. Donald walked into the courtroom. Kojikori's lawyers asked him to, quote, take no action. And two minutes later, I guess we will adjourn this hearing. Honestly, it's confusing and vexing. Attorney Beth Green is a former prosecutor. She's not part of this case, but was willing to help us break down what happened. My knee jerk reaction is that her attorneys had negotiated a favorable oh, yeah. Sorry. plea on her behalf, a favorable plea arrangement with the state, and she changed her mind. Green explained it's perfectly legal for a defendant to change their mind about entering a plea, but thinks the defense counsel was likely surprised by the timing. Had they known they're just really she was small for some reason mind and refused to come to court, there's no doubt in my mind they would have alerted uh, the court personnel, the judge, as well as the prosecutor's office. They would not have wasted everyone's time had they known. After more than a year behind bars, Kojikori was expected to enter a plea, and there was a possibility of getting out of jail on time served. So I think any of us reasonably would be like, why wouldn't you want to do that? But, you know, perhaps she's scared. You know, perhaps there's a circumstance out there um, in the case, in the investigation that none of us know about that are called that's causing her to be fearful. Green also said it's important to remember that outside the legal process, there's still a very human decision being made. If she, in fact, was going to plead guilty and say, as a mother, I failed my child. I mean, there's still an admission of guilt that she has to emotionally and mentally get through to stand up in court. So what she means next is the big question and green speculated that she means that she's scared to do it. Like she doesn't want to be told. She doesn't want to tell everybody that she's guilty of something, but she is guilty. Her daughter went missing under her care. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, have a great night, AOR. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Hope you have a wonderful full moon. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an update on her because this this case really bothers me so much. I, I really, um, I know the cops are doing all everything that they can be doing and the investigators are doing everything that they could be doing, but you know, you just always want to have a little more. Now I'm hoping that her mom made some sort of deal and she'll sleep on it over the weekend. And then she'll say, oh yeah, I should have went to court. You know, um, I should take the deal. But if she hears now, right, if she's in her cell block now getting told or listening to the news and she says, well, wait, I don't even have to tell him anything. I could just get out of here if I plead guilty. That's not going to be good. Oh, and was so tired. I've been like that lately. I was really sleepy all day until tonight. Tonight hits and then I'm like wide awake. Um, I have never seen this picture of Audrey, um, Audrey Cunningham. I thought it was really cute. So I did, um, I was reading through this article earlier and it was, um, it was a nice little article that they had. So I figured we would, um, read through it just gives us like a brief, um, summary of everything that's happened in the case. And then we'll talk about, um, the first alleged victim of Stephen McDougal's Don Stephen McDougal, and we'll watch the Nancy Grace episode and it's like an hour long. So she's got a lot of really good info. Like Nancy got an um, interview with the guy that found, um, 
you know, you sonar, the diver that found her, um, got interviews with a gas station attendant that had put, um, had placed like Stephen McNougal at the gas station that they worked at. So it should be a good, um, episode for you guys to watch. Um, and in case you missed anything, it should be in here. I was reading through this. It seemed like it was pretty, um, factual. Um, Audrey Cunningham, or yeah, Audrey Cunningham from Le uh, Livingston, Texas, disappeared sometime after 7 a.m. on Thursday, February 15th. She was supposed to catch the bus to school at her neighborhood stop, but according to school officials, she was never picked up and never reported to school. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl's body was finally found on Tuesday, February 20th in the Trinity River near L Livingston after a frantic search for the young girl that involved dive teams scouring the river as local river authorities slowed the outflow of Lake Living or Livingstone to help the gram, um, the gram, gram discovery, gram discovery of the girl's body found tied to a rock ended a six day search that saw a friend of her dad's identified as a person of interest. Don Stephen McDougal, 42 lived in a trailer camper on Audrey's family's property and had numerous prior interactions with her. When she was reported missing, he took part in the initial search before he was arrested last Friday on an unrelated charge. With so much to unpack in a truly disturbing and heartbreaking case, we took we took a closer look at everything we know about Audra, Audrey Cunningham, um, Don Stephen McDougal, and Audrey's disappearance. Audrey Cunningham was a regular 11-year-old girl from East Texas, but her young life was sadly cut short after she disappeared on the way to school. At a vigil for the young girl, family and friends gathered to remember the bright, friendly child near the river where her body was found. Her aunt Brenda Cedar said, no matter where she went or who she met, she just made them light up. She could always make you laugh no matter what kind of mood you were in. It just isn't fair that we all got robbed of that. Audrey's mom, Cassie Matthews, told those at the memorial that her pain had left her lost for words as she described her daughter as perfection. She said, I'm at a loss for words most of the time, other than the fact that I am beyond blessed to have been able to give birth to something that is, she was perfection. And you know, as a parent, we're all pretty biased that we think our kids are perfect, but it just is what it is. But I'm truly blessed to have give, given birth to such an amazing little girl. Audrey was known for making friends easily. And according to Cassie Evans, her daughter attended school with her. She was friendly, very nice, and very caring. An Amber Alert was issued on Thursday, February 15th for Audrey. Audrey, after she failed to return home from school, her family said she had left for the bus stop at 7 a.m. that morning, but it was later discovered that she had never boarded the bus or been registered as having arrived at school. I have a question. I don't know why this just popped into my head like it did, but it did. Um, and I, I don't know if I, we've asked this before. Why didn't the school call the grandmother? Like if you're, if you're going to be out on a boat, like if you're a father and you're a fisherman and you know that there are parts of the year that you're going to be like out at sea, like you're not going to be there to answer your phone or be, have it, you know, where you can grab it. Um, wouldn't you give the school somebody's number that you in fact trusted to, and that was in the area that could go to the school immediately, like for an emergency. I mean, he can't get off a boat if there's an emergency. Um, I mean, he can, but it's going to take a lot of time. Do you know what I mean? Like you have somebody in the area that can go right to the school. If she's sick, something happens, an accident, school, playgr playground, you know, something. But she had this guy. Man. Like, I don't know why the school didn't reach out to the grandmother. And maybe they did. Maybe they did. Oh, look, my cat wants to out. Hold on one second. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. That was funny. Oh, do you? Catherine said we have to list three other people for emergencies. Huh. I wonder who we listed, you know? Hey, wizard. And welcome in, Aldo. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm glad the hubby's doing great too, Jan. That's good to see that. The next day, February 16th, Polk County Sheriff's Office, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and other law enforcement agencies searched Lake Livingston on February 17th, Texas DPS released an image of a 2003 blue Chevy Suburban believed to be a vehicle of interest. Uh, 
she was older than like, she was like pretty much younger than the car she was in. Like that car was old. The same day, they also announced they found a bright yellow, red, yellow Hello Kitty backpack they believed to be Audra's near a river. Later that day, Don Stephen McDougall was declared a person of interest. Officials say he was a friend of Audrey's father and allowed to live in a trailer behind their house. He was arrested on Friday, February 16th for an unrelated aggravated A um, charge. The next day, a video showed McDougall being questioned by officers in Livingston. And then that was the video we all saw, um, you know, where he's looks like he's tweaking out. Um, on February 19th, McDougall admitted to Polk County officials he had left the house with Audrey the morning she went missing. Late, just a day later, Tuesday, February 20th, Audrey's body was found in the Trinity River on U.S. Highway 59 near Livingston. McDougall was charged with capital M. And then it goes back into his background, which we know a little bit about. McDougall was a family friend who lived on Audrey's family's property and even took part in the search for her after she was declared missing. Polk County Sheriff Byron Loyne said during a search to find Audrey, McDougall went around the neighborhood knocking on doors and asking people if they'd seen the young girl. To me, it simply tells me that he's trying to give the appearances that he has um, no play or he's at, or he's no, I'm oh, sorry. Let me read that again. To me, it simply tells me is that he's trying to give the appearances that he has no play or he's not at fault in her disappearance and that he's part of the concerned parties who are trying to locate her. In a press conference, the sheriff said McDougal was supposed to take Audrey to the bus stop on Thursday morning, and he was just he was the last person to see her before she disappeared. Um, living on her family's property, McDougal had numerous previous interactions with Audrey and had previously taken her to the bus stop or even driven her to school if she missed the bus. McDougal told investigators he had left the Cunningham's home with Audrey that morning, but refused to say if he had dropped her off at the bus stop. Like, right then and there, I'm... I don't, I don't know. End of discussion. Like, why won't you tell us? Um, in the days following Audrey's disappearance, McDougal claimed in several social media comments he was not guilty and had done nothing wrong, according to activity on Facebook account appearing to belong to the suspect. A comment from the account on a true crime Facebook page reads, I was there and was questioned. I am not running or hiding. I have done nothing. I can. I have done everything I can do to help find her. I have done nothing wrong. That didn't age well. However, when police stopped McDougal in his car, they found rope, which was later identified as being similar to the rope used to tie Audrey to the large rock, which was thrown into the river with her. Authorities have also used cell phone data and video footage to place him in three key areas related to the investigation, including one near the area where Audrey's body was found. McDougal has an extensive criminal history, including a charge of enticing a child. His criminal history dates back to at least 2003 with convictions for violent crimes on his record according to court records in several counties across Texas. wonder if anybody's looked outside of Texas. His conviction of enticing a child dates back to 2007. Incident in Bazora, Bazoria County, Texas, according to court records. He pled no contest and was sentenced to two years in prison, but was given credit for 527 days. And that child um, incident, she's come forward. That, that girl has come forward now. Uh, and she's put herself out there. So... That takes a lot. The offense of enticing a child is defined by the state of Texas as the intent to interfere with the lawful custody of a child younger than 18 years when a person entices, persuades, or takes the child from the custody of the parent or guardian. He was convicted in 2010 and 2019 for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. According to the victim in the 2010 aggravated assault, McDougal attacked his former coworker after being thrown out of his house. Nice guy. Seems like a great, great guy. It's crazy. Um, but this is the girl that came. She's come forward now. Um, and her name is Carissa Davis. She was one year younger than Audrey Cunningham when the man accused of Audrey's murder tried undressing her. So she was 10. 10 years old. In March 2007, Davis, then 10 years old, said she was at a family gathering at her uncle's Bazora home, County home. Don Stephen McDougal's sisters were friends of the family and brought him along. 
He came into the room that me and my cousin were sleeping in. Davis recounted in an exclusive interview with Eyewitness News. Davis said McDougal yanked her cousin from their bed and then got into bed with her. He tried to take down my pants and I immediately jumped out, jumped up at that moment. Davis said, I remember looking at him. I was like, do you know how old I am? Wow. At 10 years old, she was thinking that. She does look like Audrey, doesn't she? I'll have to put her picture back up. She she does. She looks like an, an older Audrey to me. When I saw other pictures too, I was like, oh, they could be sisters. Um, wow. Davis said she raised for the door, but McDougal followed her. He grabbed me and when he did, I just swung my arm and I hit him. That didn't stop McDougal from searching the house for her, but she said she alerted her aunt before he found her. Davis said she recognized McDougal instantly when his photo surfaced after Audrey's disappearance and now wonders what could what would have happened had she been unable to break free. Everybody was still asleep. I mean, my uncle's backyard was the woods. I mean, it could have been me. McDougal pled guilty to enticing a child and was sentenced to two years in prison, but got credit for almost one and a half years served. What? Sentenced to two years, but he got um, a year and a half. Okay. Credit. Notably, he wasn't required to register as an S offender and went to face numerous other charges. I think Brazoria County definitely failed me and failed Audra, Audrey and possibly more. Yeah. Um, Y'all failed some kids. Yeah, he got to, yeah, he only got two years and then he got out after, after six months. Like, you know, wow. Yeah. They let so out. Yeah. Yep. And they protect him. Yeah. I mean, he didn't even have to register. Like, what the? F you went to jail because you took down a little girl's pants. What? Do you, I mean, were you? That's all you're going to do. That's all you're going to do. You're going to do nothing else. <laughs> you just thought she needed your help. Like, I mean, really, what do you, what, how do you condone that? How do you say we're going to let him out after a year and a half? Yeah, Jay. I know. I thought that Texas was hard on crimes over there. What are we doing, Texas? Well, if Texas ain't going to be hard on him, we got Miss Nancy Grace that will be because she was on one. Um, oh, there we go. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see this, but it was good. It's good. I was watching a little bit of it earlier, but then I stopped it. Like I always do. I'm like, wait, I might as well just watch it with y'all. <laughs> Registration needs to be nationwide. Yes. I feel like that when you have to be, when you have to be documented on paper like that, right? That to me would make me not want to get in trouble. Like I would be like, okay, if I get in trouble, then I'm going back to jail. But if you're out and you don't have to report to nobody, you don't have to like um, register for anything. I mean, what? And you got off with it with a quarter of the time. I mean, what's telling you to not go do it again? But this time you don't leave a witness. You know? That's what he was thinking. Hey, Deborah. Oh, Nora, I smell PB cookies. I think I'd better investigate. Oh, I shouldn't have said that too loud. Vincent's been wanting these peanut butter cookies, but I need a baking pan. I got rid of our old one. So I'm going to play Nancy here. Um, if you guys don't mind just taking a second to hit the like button, do all the things, you know, the like button, the subscribe button, all the things. Um, we will be covering Delphi. I think tomorrow we're going to do Nancy came out of an episode and I want to watch it. Um, there are more cases I want to cover though. I want to cover Elijah Vu. I want to cover the court arraignment for that. And I wanted to, I thought there was another case. I wanted to cover. Yeah. Chad Doerman. Um, and then there was another one I thought, but there's just so many. I'm like, we got to just pack them into like a jam packed Saturday night live or something. So we can get them all. Um, we can go through them all. Cause we've, we've got updates in a lot of cases. And then if you missed last night's live, my title does have, I think it just has, um, Audrey and Elijah on it, but we ended up talking and doing case updates for like five or six different kids that we're covering on the um, channel. So we hit it hard. Hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and play this here and I will 
be in the chat with you guys. And I'll also pause it, you know, wherever we need to, to talk about some stuff. Did 11 year old Audrey Cunningham ever have a chance? Her mother is now posting heart-wrenching messages about how she, quote, failed her daughter. The father had her living in his home with his grandparents and in the backyard is a Nazi Aryan brother covered in hate tattoos who would take her to school alone in the car with him with a sex offense in the last hours we learned that this 11 year old little girl do any of you have little girls or little boys that are or were 11 years old this little girl's body was weighted down with a rock tied by rope to her body who could do that to an 11 year old little girl a monster i mean take a look at this guy would you leave your child alone with him much less put her in the car with him give him access to your home i just thought of something this is this is gonna sound crazy too but it, it is kind of crazy after my accident, I had to get transported to, you know, the hospital and up to my doctors. I lived an hour and 15 minutes away and I didn't drive. My mom didn't have a car. She didn't drive because she was getting older. It was like a big thing. So I had to take transportation through my insurance for a little while. And it was rough. So this guy comes to pick me up and he, this person liked to pick me up for my appointment. And he came in one of those free candy vans, you know, from like Astro van, like literally. And it was like rusted. It was just, it looked bad. My mom straight went out there and was like, she's not leaving with you. I was 28 years old. I was 28 years old. And my mom straight went out there because I couldn't walk to, you know, go after. And she was like, uh -uh. sorry, Charlie, but no, because I mean, and, and it wasn't just the car. It was the person too. So I'm glad she did that because you never know. But she was like, she's not. So for them to just place her in the seat with him and be like, okay, you can take her to school is, is still beyond me. With your child, a my mom was like, you ain't going nowhere around him. I mean, think about it. One of his last offenses on his rap sheet. Oh yeah. He got a sweet plea deal. Didn't have to register as a sex offender and walked free over and over and over and over and over. But this time he had access to a home and was caught in the bed with a minor child, a girl, and had taken off her underwear and PJ bottoms. Now he has access to Audrey, and now Audrey is dead at the bottom of a river, weighted down by a rock. Oh, yeah. Texas, it's on you. You have the DP death penalty. Needle. You going to use it? Are you going to let him somehow slip out of this too? Because all of his other crimes, most of them were in Texas. And he walked. He skipped out of the courthouse. Free as a bird. He ran, hopscotched, out of the jail each time. And now Audrey is dead. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. Wow. What we have learned overnight by taking a long, hard look at a formal affidavit used as an arrest warrant, wait till they perform those searches. But right now, joining me, in addition to an all-star panel to make sense of the evidence as we know it right now, this lady is a hero. The lady that called police when she spotted this Nazi Aryan brother sex perv who I believe murdered an 11 year old girl, Audrey. I believe he raped her and I believe he weighted her body down with a rock and threw her body in the river. Joining me right now is Leslie Gascon Gaskins. She is an Exxon employee and she's the one 
that called 911 and landed his rear end behind bars. Of course, then he started lying and lying and lying. But despite his lies, police managed to find Audrey's body. Leslie Gaskins, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Ms. Gaskins. I'm very excited. Yes, ma'am. Tell me what happened when you see the defendant covered in all his tattoos. I don't know if you could see his swastika uh, or not, but tell me what happened when he came into your Exxon. Say it was just a few dollars in change for gas. It could have been a couple of beers. I'm not real sure because I didn't know that he was significant. But he was so ugly. I keep saying that. He's just so ugly and so creepy looking that you just don't forget his face. That's the face not only not a mother could even love. I mean, I would remember exactly what he got if he came into the gas station. I'd be like, yeah, I know what it is. And it just, I don't know, his face just stuck with me. And then the next day when I saw Squeaky his mug shot and they said to call if you had seen him, I called right then. Didn't even hesitate. What? Uh, now, do we know when that picture was taken? Now, was that one of his old booking pictures or is that from this time around? I'm wondering. Because I, I can't figure that out. But I was wondering because I'm wondering about the abrasions on his head. If it's from the cops, like take him to the ground. That's what I'm assuming. It looks like a head, um, like him hitting the concrete almost, or like a, a burn from like, you know, the, the road. It doesn't look like a scratch mark to me or anything like that. Um, so I was wondering if it was from this case or a different case. Came into your Exxon. Are you saying that it was either for gas or beer? Yeah. It was, yeah. And I'm curious, yes, hold on, let me get my right in him. What time of the day did he come in? It was after nine o'clock, I believe. I'm not real sure. Nine a.m., you know, nine p.m. I am. I am. I worked the day shift that day. Uh, question Was this on February 15, the day Audrey went yes, missing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I worked the day shift that day. What time do you go in? I go in at 5 15. In so the morning. you're there first thing in the morning. Now, February 15, I believe, was a Thursday, correct? Yes, ma'am. So you're there at 5 a.m., 5 15. You get everything opened up and ready. What were you doing? Were you behind the counter when he came in? Yes. Yes, ma'am. There was a line of people, and he was just in the middle of the line. Did he smell of alcohol or anything else? Pot, cigarettes? No. no. No, I didn't notice. And he wasn't dirty like they said uh, when he got went to the mechanic shop. Yeah. He wasn't dirty and all that either. So this is 9 a.m. trying to place him that time in the uh, line of events that we have so far. Do you recall what he was wearing? I don't. I don't. What about I, I, him? Probably a wife beater with a hole in it. His she face, said he was ugly. His, <laughs> his beard. His, oh, my God. Eyes. That's a new one. If I have to look at him, you have to look at him. But my God. Is he sitting on his mom's couch or something or her quilt? Looks like yeah, his grandmother's dead. Eye. Yeah, does one look one way and one look the other way? He does it what he smells. does, yes, ma'am. I've tried to figure and that I out because in he... some pictures, they look like they're both looking at you. And in others, one looks like it's looking off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think he kind of was kind of a regular here. I think I've seen him in here before. You would remember that. You would remember him and you would remember his eye. Just, I mean, and this is coming from somebody that has prosthetic, but you would remember that. I feel like if you looked up, I mean, his eyes are very distinctive. I feel like they're almost even like two colors. I need to see them both. He, the pictures he takes, he hates to put them both in this remember same picture. Uh, he, he's just, 
Is the it? eyes. Yeah. I, the first time I saw his eyes, they're very light blue. Is that what it is? And they're mm -hmm. piercing. And there's just something off. Now, could you see all of his tattoos? No, ma'am. I don't think I could. I think I could see the like a little bit around his neck. I think he had a t-shirt on. He didn't have a tank top. Did you by chance? Oh, it wasn't see summer. His hands? Yeah, but I really didn't pay that much attention. Darn. I'm wondering if there were any Darn. scratches on his body. Things Yankee on Kyle. his neck, his chest, his arms, his hands. He did he have on a long sleeve shirt? No, I Winter. don't think so. Did he say anything in recollection? Just whatever he was getting, you know. Uh I it's four thirty three and gas is keep sticking in my head. Okay, so four thirty three and gas. At that time you noticed him and you remembered him because of, because of his eyes and his tattoos. And what happened next? He leaves. You don't think any more about it until when? Till I saw him on the on the on Facebook the next morning. What did you see? His his mugshot saying if you'd seen him, he was the last seen with Audrey. If uh had if you had seen him, uh please call. And so I did. Would it concern you if he gets out on bond, if he's walking free? Yes. Why? Yes, definitely, yes. Because he's dangerous, he's crazy. And he you're doesn't a witness. need to be out. Did you yeah. have did you ever meet or see Audrey or her father or mother or grandparents? I know my daughter is friends with Audrey's mother. And we've known Audrey when she was smaller, but not seen her here recently. Why wasn't the mother living with her? I have no idea. I have no idea. Because it sounds like to me... Uh, she was in a worse situation than if she would have been with her mother. You so know? does the mother live in town there? She lives in uh, Livingston, I believe. Okay, with a population of a little over 5,000 people, how far away could it be? Um, yeah. Did you know her dad? No, I do not know him. Do you know how the dad knows the perpetrator? Um, friends, um, if you look on their face, on his Facebook, they have, uh, he's been tagged in posts of the dads for years, it looks like. You are hearing the voice of Leslie Gaskins, the Exxon employee who saw the suspect of the morning, on the morning that Audrey goes missing and called police. Miss Gaskins. Thank you. I hope you are prepared to testify. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I will do my part. He shouldn't have never been out anyway. No. Nope. Not with his rap sheet. Look how he big his neck never is. Never been out. Miss Gaskins, thank you so much. Like he's he looks bigger, but he's not that big. Like what was it? I forget how much he weighs. One eighty something. I want to say one eighty five, five nine. I mean, I guess he's bigger. I mean, I mean that's not big. I feel like I mean that's just like regular size guy. But to an 11 year old little girl, huge. Joining us now, an all star panel to make sense of what we know right now. But overnight, this is what we learn. Listen. According to court documents, Don Stephen McDougall used a rope consistent with a rope seen in his vehicle two days earlier during a police traffic stop to tie a large rock to the body of Audrey Cunningham to weigh it down in the Trinity River. Investigators were able to locate the body of Audrey Cunningham in the Trinity River by using cell phone records and video analysis, but they also needed help from the Trinity River Authority to lower the level of the water on the river so divers could find Audrey. After removing her body from the Trinity River, Sheriff Byron Lyons said she was taken to the Harris County Medical Examiner's Office in Houston to determine the cause of death. Joining us, joining us an all-star panel, but first to Bob Price joining us, associate editor, senior news contributor, Breitbart, Texas. Bob, thank you for being with us. Tell me about the rock 
that was used to weight down this 11 year old girl's body. So Nancy, I had, had suspe suspected that he had used some kind of a weight or device to tie her down. I asked Sheriff Lyons about that during the, the press conference on uh, Tuesday when they announced that uh, they had found her body. And at that time, he did not want to disclose the information as to what he had used to weigh her down, but he did not deny uh, that she had been held underwater by some type of, of apparatus and stuff. So now we know that there was a rope used, a rope that was seen in his vehicle two days before during a traffic stop, which again reemphasizes that the avoidability of this tragedy, had there been an arrest warrant for, for Mr. McDougal on an aggravated assault where he stabbed an individual back in August and was identified by the victim as, as the attacker in this assault, there would have been a warrant for him during that traffic stop and he would have been in jail two days before her death. You know what? I've been uh, torturing myself all night long about coulda, shoulda, woulda. We have been looking at the affidavit attached to a warrant and gleaning information about the death of this 11-year-old girl and what was transpiring during the time after daddy leaves the house and the defendant is there alone with the little girl. Joining us right now, Tim Miller, the founder of Texas EquiSearch, who actually went and searched searching the waterways, trying to find Audrey. And I do want to point out to Texas EquiSearch, they're, they're beautiful people. They're beautiful people. I don't know if you guys heard. Not only did they volunteer to go out there and search for this little girl, but they're the ones that paid for her funeral. Like, they paid for her funeral. That gives me goosebumps. I mean, like, you think of it as a parent, that's the worst day of your life is finding out that your child has been unalived. And then you have to think of, now you have to plan a funeral. Then you think of, oh my God, I have to pay for this funeral. And it's like a whole thing, like anxiety, emotions. It's, it's, it's ugly. It's ugly, you know? So I'm really glad that they don't have to deal with that kind of stuff right now. I mean, although, you know, all the stuff that happened, you know, all that's nothing, you know? But I think that's a beautiful thing. I think that's such a beautiful thing. It says a lot about them as, you know, a whole. But, like, I mean, they're they're awesome. They're awesome. Tim Miller, thank you for being with us. You've done so many water searches. Tell me about this search and the discovery of her body. When you were using sonar, looking through the water there, which is has a pretty good current to it, could you tell at that time she was weighted down? Well, Nancy, when we got involved in that, the sheriff actually called me Friday and said he needed our help. And we had many, many ground searches. Saturday, we found something right along the shoreline, which ended up as being evidence. So where that was found, I decided I need to start. Okay, wait, wait, our... wait. Are you talking about the Hello Kitty backpack? Uh, no, something else, not the backpack. What? We found. We found something right at the edge of the river. I don't want to disclose that. Was it a shoe? <laughs> was it clothing? <laughs> She's so bad. Uh, it was clothing. So last night we went. I remember when we watched last night. She got the guy to say that it was pants or something that he found. Now this is he's going. She's going to get him to say so something. So I decided I wanted to. Start was it was it, odd, was it a girl's clothing? Yes, ma'am. And, and it definitely is evidence. It 100% is evidence. They are. They're very awesome. I mean, so hold on me... just a second. Hold on just a second. Joining me, Director of Victim Services there in Texas, joining me out of Houston, Andy Kahn, longtime colleague. Andy, the girl's yep. clothing, he obviously, the girl was sex assaulted. That Why would she not have clothing on? Why would her clothing be separate from her body? I mean, this you guy, know, I, this guy needs to be on death row. It's not the first time, Andy. What in the hay is going on in Texas? This guy had offense after offense after offense. And now I'm hearing from Tim Miller, article of clothing found at the edge of the river 
And Tim Miller, who, by the way, is a crime victim himself, his daughter was murdered, is out there and sees this. What What's going on? You know, Nancy, there's a reason we have the death penalty in the state of Texas. And McDougal is now the poster boy why we have uh-uh. the death penalty. No, no, no. You can blow your horn about Texas and justice. After, after the trial. Used, why was he out free? He had yes, already early. crawled in between the sheets with another little girl and taken off her underwear and PJs. He's got one offense after the next, after the next, after the next. The man is using meth for Pete's sake. The Nazi I mean, tattoo alone should have gotten him kicked off the property. That didn't work. But that said, don't start preaching to me about Texas as a death penalty. I want to know what this guy's doing out walking around to start with. The state of Texas failed 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham. Blah, no blah, if, answer, but blah. The state of Texas failed this 10-year-old girl back in 2007 who he evidently was trying to sexually assault and he got a sweetheart deal. He got sweetheart deal after sweetheart deal. How did you know she was 10 years old? I didn't know that had been made public. Yes, it is. I'm looking at it right now. We were trying to protect her identity. Yes. (laughs) Yes, he's mad. (laughs) He's pissed. She is... I'm sorry. She made me laugh there because she's kind of like, she's like, oh, how, how how do you know that kind of? He's like, well, it's right here. She's like, we're trying to protect her identity. I just think Nancy is, Nancy is very, could be very, very humorous. But um, yeah, no, I think the whole, I think the state of Texas, I think the child protective services failed her. I think her parents failed her. I think her grandparents failed her. And Similar your to girl. Audrey. A lot of people Correct. failed her. Very yep. similar. I don't think Jared is. I don't know. I have to check. This. <laughs> I mean, you know what, Andy Khan? My dad, God rest your soul, daddy, would have killed this guy yep. if he had tried to get in bed with me or my sister or brother. I don't understand why he got a cheap plea deal. And on the cheap plea deal. My dad would have caught a charge. Khan, he didn't even say, I'm guilty. They let him plead, plead no low contendere. He wouldn't even no. admit what he did. I mean, talk about a sweet deal. Is that like no contest in the state of Texas? I don't know what she just said, what the, what the word was, but I think that's what it means. It's like the same as, you know, having a no contest. You don't have to like plead that you don't have to say that you're guilty, but you have to say like the state does have enough evidence that against you that if it went to a court, went to a courtroom that you would most likely be found guilty. Texas justice yeah, my rear end. Then they cut it down to enticing a child, which isn't even an offense that you have to register for. And that brings us to what we're going to be doing. How is that enticing a child? Session. Actually, how is that enticing a child? He forcefully put, took her pants and underwear down, and then she jumped up, punched him, and ran. That's attempted R, if you ask me. And I made a promise, and I'm going to continue their promise. That we oh, are please, going to you, know, I, I, you bill. think I trust a bunch of politicians in a room together? No. You, I mean, I, I, I trust you, Andy. I, I know trust you're going to do the right thing. Yeah. And okay, I'm going to make I it happen. Can I get to legislation? Let me guess. It's going to be called Audrey's Law. Yep. Unfortunately, <laughs> That's great. You I don't want it. the child dead so she can have a law named after her. I want her alive. I can't have what I want. Now the only thing I can get is a death penalty. That's the only thing yeah. we can work toward now. But that said, you can tell me about your legislation later. And don't worry. I respect what you're doing. I value what you're doing. I want you to do it. But I guarantee you, if you leave one little crack in that legislation, some defense attorney is going to find a way around it so it won't apply to their client. Think about that. Tim Miller, can I get back to the search? Yeah. I, I, you just yeah. got me so upset thinking about her being separated from her clothes. Now, I don't know what piece of clothing it is. It could have been a shirt. It could have been her pants. It could have been her underwear. But when you said it's definitely evidence, that makes me think it could have been her underwear. 
Well, it was definitely clothing, and it's definitely hers. So I decided to start doing side. Was it her pants? Uh, yeah. Why does an eleven-year-old girl not have her pants on? Mm -hmm. He raped her. He raped her. This animal raped this eleven-year-old girl. Okay, back to the search, guys. When we're talking about sonar. Think about, uh, you've seen, if you haven't gone fishing yourself, you've seen it on the fishing channel. You can't miss that. It's 24 seven, 365 people are fishing. It looks like, um, a blurry iPad screen. They even have them. You can hold in your hand, the size of a cell phone and it looks gray, but then you can see black spots. Some are a lot more sophisticated, but those spots are objects in the water now tim miller has state of the art okay tell me what happened tim well i started sonar in that area and of course the river was high the current was strong and it's like oh my god is she gonna wash away or what suddenly i got what well, i what did thought you see a... that made you know it was audrey well, on, the, on Sunday when I saw her, I did a child, know Nancy. That it was Audrey. The conditions were the worst you could ever imagine with sonar. So I went back to the same exact spot, and the image I got, I couldn't get it again. I couldn't get it again. I literally went through that area more than 80 times. Wow. And then I Didn't got give another up. image, and I said, oh, my God. I said, I could make out legs and Now, hold arms. on, Tim Miller. You know we don't say OMG on CES Crime Stories, but go ahead. <laughs> what so, did it uh, look like, Tim Miller? How could you tell that it was I, a child I, versus something else? No, I, I could make out the body. So I went, and, and but it wasn't as clear because of the currents, because of where it was. It was, it just was so dark, a dirt, so a dirty I water. So dark and so dark. And then Monday I so dark Tim, again. What went got, through your mind when you spotted that? You must have just been sick to your. I knew it was. I knew it was her, but I couldn't repeat it. And it's like, how come it? If there's something there, it's got to stay there. And so. I got with the divers on Monday and the Texas Rangers. I showed them. The Did you go the down yourself? The no, I didn't dive. It. You know, I don't even take a bath, but I'm pretty good at sonar. <laughs> but you said the hell I don't even take a bath. So this, you guys are diving in a, a fast current in the river, correct? Well, on Monday when I showed them the image and we all got together, they said, "Oh my God, it, 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 I think you're right. I think it's a body. We have to dive on it." Well, the currents were so strong and the river was high that they could never get to that image. So then they decided to shut the That's dam. That's hard, man. But I've done dives in fast currents in rivers, and it's it's not like on TV. It's really hard to do that, much less to get. Was she all the way down at the bottom because of the rock? Well, she was doing that, and I believe that she was high that rope i'm sorry so what she now was, she was what she was tied off to that rope she was tied onto the rope and at the other end of the rope was a rock like tied and, off on it so then her body or was, was the rock kind of like a i don't know why it made me think of this and this is a bad analogy but like a skip it did you guys have those when you were a kid the skip it's where they go around like one ankle and then you like you know, you skip the little thing when it comes around. I don't know why that made me think of that, but that's what it reminds, that's what I'm thinking in my head when he said the the boulder, the rock was tied onto her. To me, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it could be on her back or on her stomach. On her body and tied to her body. Like, is it on her body? That's what I'm on. No, it's on a rope. Okay, so I was right. Like, it's on a rope, I feel like, and then it was like floating beside her, but on the rope. That's so, so bad. The body. You had one too. I rocked the body skip was it. Not on the bottom yeah. of the river, on the river bed. It, the There's rock no people was on in the it. River bed, and she was in the water. She was in the water. And so she was just swirling and swirling in there. And that's why I could never pick that same image up at the same exact spot. But I'm going to tell you the best thing he did, Nancy. The best thing he did was tie her off and weight her down. 
Because if he wouldn't have done that, and she would have floated, that current going four miles an hour in, in 24 hours, she would have been 96 miles away. Just like Natalie so the, Holloway. We'd never find the her. Best, the best thing he did for the search efforts was to go ahead and wait her down. Otherwise, again, in that current, and I just think that she would have popped up at night when nobody was there. And in 12 hours, she would have been 50 miles away. So, you know, it, it was a blessing in disguise. So, uh, yeah, when I got that image again, they dove on Monday. They could not even get to it because of the currents. They decided to shut the dam, let the water go down. And the next day when I was got, got in there, they, they found her. Tim, what do you mean when you say she was swirling and swirling? Well, if you can imagine in a current, and there's a big swale there, it's between the railroad bridge and 59 South Bridge, which is close together. So the water coming around them pilings and stuff just created a huge eddy. So she was down there just basically almost going in circles and moving around and moving around and and uh, and that's why it was so hard to get her at the very same location. Because when a body's uh, at the bottom, it's going to stay at the bottom until it starts gassing up and, and then it'll start moving. So I would go back to the same exact spot and she wasn't there. I'd, I'd go again and then get it located in another area and, and she would she was just moving. She was just moving around and. I, I I anticipate if she wouldn't have been found, of course, she would have never floated. And as bad as it sounds, the fish life and turtles and stuff would have, you know, would have just ate that body and, and she would have been found. So it was, it, you know, it was a huge effort with everybody. And you know what, Nancy? God just put us in the right place at the right time. Tim, um, not everyone knows that you lost your daughter. So when you get a case like this, what does it mean to you that you found Audrey? You're the one that spotted her on sonar. You may get me a little bit choked up right now. But when I got home, I said, Laura, thank you. Just thank you, because if you were still alive, I wouldn't be doing this. I said, thank you, Laura. That's right. Well, Nancy. I'm, I'm not saying this to pat myself in the back. There's no ego involved in it. Again. And no one even thinks that he, we think that his ego is involved. We know, we know why he does this. And I've just been blessed with by God with the you know what he's given me and 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 i'm pretty good at that sonar i'm not an expert but you're pretty damn got, good you pat your own back hmm. if it had not been for you spotting her on we wouldn't sonar, have her she could have come loose from that rope and she would have been gone like you said in 12 hours she'd be 50 miles away yeah. and we would never have the answer to what happened to audrey Cunningham. and then like I said, and, and he finds her and then he pays for her funeral. He, I mean, and it's pro and maybe it's because he was the one that found her. And oh, my gosh, what a guy, what a guy. Savage, this brute. This guy needs to be recognized more than what he is. To attack another child. And you know another thing, Tim? We know of these two little girls, 110, 111, very similar in physicality we don't know how many others are out there because you and i know tim miller that only one out of say eight or nine sex assault victims come forward and that is a conservative figure you are hearing tim miller my friend my longtime colleague who runs texas equisearch everybody on the panel jump in we got a lot to get through first of all to joe scott morgan 
renowned professor of forensics joining us out of Jacksonville State University, author of Blood Beneath My Feet, book on Amazon, and star of a hit series, Body Bags, with Joe Scott Morgan. Joe Scott, right now, we don't have a COD, cause of death. She's still at the Harris County morgue. But you know, and I know, they know the cause of death. They probably knew the cause of death the moment they looked at her. I'm guessing asphyxiation of some sort. But let me talk to you about A, toxicology. Did he dope her up with, let's just say, Benadryl or something like that? Uh, B, you heard what Tim Miller said from Texas Equus Search. The uh, water temps were very low. How did that help or hurt? Had there been any fish activity on her? I don't see how if she's in a swirling eddy. Just, you know what? You know more than me on this, Joe Scott. Just hit me. First off, I hope that the knots were not untied at the scene. Ooh, I hope yes. that yes, I hope yes. I hope that the rock was not disengaged because when when we work cases and they arrive at the morgue, we want all of the elements present so that we can fully appreciate, you know, how, for instance, with her, how was she secured? You you think about uh, the forensics of knot tying. Plus, Joe Scott, what about potential DNA on the inside of those knots? Yeah, and that that's quite interesting, depending upon how long she had been in there and not so much she, but those knots. Uh, were there any protected spaces in there? My Right now, my gut would say no, but Nancy, there's a saving grace here. And Tim had brought this up, and this is the beauty of this. This, you used the term savage. That was kind. Um, that article of clothing that was left on the uh, shore there, if it was relatively intact and it was not super saturated with water there might be um, a chance that you can find some foreign dna on there and Please that might that just, may originate. just got really i am completely drained on the case please that, speak to me in regular that. talk are you talking about when you say i i don't even you're talking about sperm you're talking about saliva you're talking about uh, epithelial skin cells, um, hair, uh, any fiber from his clothes that could be on her pants. Uh, is there some other DNA I'm missing? Hair, fiber, skin, sperm, blood, and sweat. Is there some other DNA that I'm missing? No, there's not. Uh, well, well, also on, one I of think the... Tim's jumping in. Do you have something, Tim? Hey, yeah, can I break in real quick? Please. <clears throat> actually with the Texas Rangers yesterday and stuff and do an affidavit and giving all the pictures and stuff for the trial. And one of the things that we talked about is thank God that water was as cold as it was because if he sexually assaulted her, there was possibly going to be able to get semen from her. Good point. Okay, Joe Scott, I hate to treat you like a computer, but that's more data that has been input into that brain of yours. Now spit it out as best as you can. We'll all try not to interrupt. Go ahead. No, that's okay. To. Uh, yeah. So, and one other thing here, I think that that's, that's really pertinent is the fact that that garment was found on the shore. I'm, I'm really wondering, Nancy, if he had not picked that spot to, you know, commit, uh, commit this savage attack on her, that that's the location where he may have stripped her and have done whatever he did to her that you had previously mentioned. Uh, and if that's the case. I don't see it right there. I would think that he would attack her and sex assault her in the car or in some covered area, not in the open area along the river right. bank. Yeah, but well, I think a very that wide it, open area there. At this point, I don't think that anything can be discounted, though. We don't yes, even have the you're cause. you're right. But tell me what we do know, what we well, will what get we, from that body. I yeah, can tell well, you this right now, when you don't know a yeah. horse, look at his track record. Mm -hmm. He tried to sex assault the other little girl, so he tried to sex assault this little girl. Okay? That's not a leap of imagination. That's his no, track record. No. 
So yeah, why and, else would he have her? What to sit in his car and play solitaire? To play t- to watch TikTok? Hell no. He attacked this girl. That's why she didn't have her pants on. So what evidence am I going to get? Well, given the fact that she is found in a body of water, I think that it is going to be very difficult to have success with a rape kit. If he ejaculated within her person, okay, and she's nude in the water, we don't know that at this well, point. Are you telling would... me they can't retrieve sperm from her vagina or rear end? I mean, listen to what Tim just said a second ago. Her body was swirling around, Nancy. I know, I mean, but the water she was wouldn't like go a into top. her vagina. Of course it would. Of course it would, and it does. And Hold let me on. throw one more thing at you. Hold on a second. I'm just kind of laughing because they're arguing about a woman's body part, and it's a man arguing with a woman. Now, Joseph Scott Morgan knows his stuff. He does. So that's why I was kind of giggling because he might give Nancy a run for her money. If if that isn't enough, you're talking about a small child. She's, and I hate to say this, Nancy, but she's greatly dilated at this point in time. If, in fact, she was about sexually vagina? assaulted. Yes, Nancy, I am. Well, and so if that's it, the case. Spit it out. I just, okay, now, now actually you're making sense if her vagina is dilated because of the water. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, no, because of the sexual assault. Because of the sex and, assault, you're saying that's how water could penetrate the vagina. Because ladies, think about it. When you get in the bathtub, you do not get water in your vagina. Same thing here. But what Joe Scott is saying, I think. I never thought I'd be hearing about vaginas with Nancy. Believe had been raped. Hey, Jana. Her vagina is now dilated, and water could enter and destroy the evidence. Oh dear Lord! Unless there's some evidence. We could play a drinking game out of this. Am I? Is that right? Yes, it is. And one other area here. If Nancy says vagina, everybody take a drink. I should rewind her. Might be a bit more protected. Believe it or not. Never thought we'd be talking about this. I think that with nail clippings, in particular. Uh, because that's kind of a hooded area. I think area. they're railing Everybody it back in now. Look at their fingernails. If she scraped him, there might be a possibility that that's still trapped beneath her finger fingernails. That's kind of a long shot, but that's what I would be thinking if, as well. Just got, well if I she don't. bit him, Wait, I'm sorry. If she bit him, um, that would be good evidence. If she bit him, I mean, teeth are just like um, fingerprints, you know? That would be good. Hopefully she bit. Uh, I think that they're taking their time with it. I, you know, one of the things I, I thought about, and, you know, this is way off topic. I, I, I'm really, I, and they have to consider this. I wonder if she was placed in there alive. Um, I, I don't know yeah. that. And they're trying to make a determination as to whether or not uh, perhaps that too. she had taken on uh, water in life. And they would find evidence of that in her lungs. Also, there's a test that we do in the inner ear at autopsy uh, that we check for drowning. I, I think that part of that is, is that's what's complicating this to this point. Um, and also the, the suffocation. Right, isn't it or, a matter of removing the lungs and weighing them to see if the wet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can. And there's what a standard that take? weight. 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, it does. However, what they will want to do, Nancy, also with drowning to confirm it, is we look for what are called diatoms. And that's these little creatures that exist in the water that you take on and you have to look at them microscopically. So I'm wondering if that might be part of it as well. Nancy. You mean whatever lives in the river water, whatever yeah. microscopic well, organisms would now be in her lungs. They did say, and Nancy said last night, that they are saying that her um, cause of death is because of homicidal violence and because of a blunt object. So I would think that if it was anything more than that, if it was homicidal violence and drowning, it, they would put like, and drowning. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would be included in that. Yeah. Now, uh, oh, sorry. That's the sucky thing about this country. He gets a, to live and have a trial and everything, and she doesn't. What that, is the inner those, ear test for drowning? Uh, well, that you would actually have water contained within the inner ear. And so that's part of the drowning process as well. And so that's something that we would want to consider and that they're looking at. I can tell you, gotcha. they're being very thorough with this. Uh, Joe Scott, jump in as we move along. But I want yes, to ma'am. talk about this affidavit. Joining you right now, high-profile lawyer out of Livingston, Lana Shadwick, former judge, former prosecutor, 
uh, legal analyst for Breitbart in Texas at LanaShadwick.com. Lana, thank you for being with us. Have you read the affidavit? I've got a few things I uh, want to ask you about. This guy I is have. so full of crap because we hear police say, this is where you're going to come in, Lee Reber, uh, that they were able to place a defendant with the victim. Now, how? Through cell phone data, we know that, through other digital information and through information from him. But I am telling you right now, he was lying through his teeth. The information they likely got from him is from his cell phone because triangulation doesn't lie. Pings don't lie. This guy lied through his teeth. Well, they've got him now. I mean, he's, he's at the bridge with cell phone data, the pings. I mean, you can lie all you want to, but, you know, unfortunately, I mean, he, I mean, unfortunately, he tied her to a rock, and that's where the body was found. They're going to be able to do, um, ping his cell phone, get video uh, footage of that 2003 blue uh suburban and placed him there and now that vehicle is in the custody of law enforcement authorities and you know they are combing it you know uh, i want you to look lana at paragraph five affiant shall show through investigation that's the cop is the affiant investigations were able to determine through cell phone data video footage and other forensic evidence that mcdougall lied about his whereabouts and activities. He flat out they got lied. Him. Hey, yeah, they got him. And another thing, take a listen to our friend. Any evidence that they have of him, of her and his vehicle, if it's like a strand of hair, a fingerprint, something of that nature, they're not going to be able to dif differentiate if it was left there that day that she went missing or on a prior occasion because he's known to drive her to school before and you know drive her all the way to school and a driver to the bus stop so i think the car might be um not a good key like good source of evidence unless they find like biological evidence in there and thank you janet for being a member for three months that's awesome your little titan arm moved it changed colors and he was definitely trying to put this on mom in my opinion at Crime Online, Rachel Bonilla. According to KTRK, Don Stephen McDougall was seen in a Livingston mechanic shop near Highway 59 the day Audrey went missing. Workers at the shop said McDougall was filthy, covered in dirt and acting suspicious. He was there trying to get a part for his blue Chevy Suburban. So we know that he was completely filthy at a mechanic's shop. What about that, Lana? Filthy with what? Because he had been down there at the riverbank getting rid of a body? Well, absolutely. That's evidence of um, where he was um, beyond, you know, having cell phone pings and video footage. Now they've got him covered in a lake river mud. And so saying he's filthy. So the guy's so smart, he doesn't even bother to clean up anything before he goes out to get a part for his car. I, I'm, I'm very been... curious um, about what we know regarding that video footage and the cell phone pings. Bob Price joining me, associate editor, senior news contributor, Breitbart, Texas. Bob, do you know that the pings absolutely place him on that bridge? Because based well, on what Tim that, Miller is saying, he didn't the... throw a body off a bridge. He went down on the riverbank. Right, and with the clothing found on the riverbank and not tangled up in the grass along the river's edge, uh, we, we know that he was up on that bank and probably placed her or pushed her into the water with that rock attached. Not only did the cell phone data confirm that, though, he took the police to that location on Saturday and, and said that that was one of the places that he'd been. Now, he lied about some other things, but... He admitted that he was at that location. Well, now, the Bob, interesting Bob, thing about him getting Bob, a part. Please, my dear, sweet boy, 
He only did that when they showed him, hey, your phone is pinging right here. Oh, sure. Probably. He didn't volunteer probably and so, he lied but... through his teeth, man. So he was at this car shop getting parts for his car. He went on Facebook that day and started selling off a bunch of his personal belongings. He was planning to run at that point. And, and fortunately, the police caught up with him before he had a chance to flee. Lee Reber is joining us at a new Alexandria, Virginia, mobile device forensic expert and CEO of Oxygen Forensics, Inc. He is the author of, listen to this, Mobile Forensic Investigations. And he's the host of a podcast, which is great, by the way, Forensic Happy Hour. Lee, Lee Reber, thank you for being with us. Lee, explain to me how much can I rely on pings? How accurate are they? Can they place him at that river bank? Um, hey, Tim Miller, how close were Audrey's pants to the bridge? Were they thrown from the bridge? Or would he have had to go down to the river bank? Had to go down to the river bank, and the, and it was actually in the water, so it was saturated with water. Uh oh, Joe Scott Morgan's not going to like that because that could have gotten rid of any forensic evidence linking the defendant back to her pants. But that said, uh, I'll go back to you in a second, Joe Scott. Lee Reber, explain to me how accurate is the pinging process. Yeah, I think the, you know, if you look at the triangulation, I mean, that's, it could be accurate, it could be very accurate, but what I think is more important is the forensic evidence that's going to be from the device itself when they go and do the collection of that, because those are just GPS devices that could put you, I mean, a meter uh, to the location. So I think that utilizing, obviously, identifying, being able to, you know, he's lying, because the location, but once they have that device in their possession and do the processing of that, it's going to show, I mean, there might be photos and the photos have uh, exit data. We can show location. Uh, they can have just a simple, uh, 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 from the data that's on the device, any applications that were utilized and showing GPS locations. So I, I think the data from the device itself will, is, will be way more important than, than looking at, uh, say, the, the data from the towers. Quick question. Bob Price joining us, Breitbart. What year is this PERV's Chevy Suburban? So the sheriff announced that they were looking for information about this 2003 dark blue uh, Chevy Suburban that he was seen Got it. driving 2003. to him. Okay. To Lee Reber, mobile device forensic expert, remember the Alex Murdoch trial? How much we learned from his NAV system? You could even tell, Lee, and you and I talked about this, you were awesome, when Murdoch got in his car when he put his people on to leave the scene of the double murder where he murdered his wife and son, the nav system will even show him opening the car door, closing it, cranking up, putting the car in drive, driving, screeching out of the crime scene, slow riding driving like a bat out of hell slowing down it showed when he let his window down electronically which i argue is when he threw maggie murdoch's cell phone out the window let the window back up and then hightailed it to his mother's house 28 miles away it showed when he cranked back up got back in and went back to the crime scene and went oh dear lord in heaven my wife and son are dead let me call 911 it was all a lie but those nav systems are amazing. Is there such a nav system in a two nav system in a two thousand three suburban? Well, the vehicle itself. I mean, uh, in two thousand and four, uh, you know, or if you remember the OnStar system, you know, they had OnStar systems. I know the two thousand and four Chevy Suburban uh, has an OnStar. They all have computers with the nav system. Two thousand three. Uh, yeah, even in two thousand three. I'm just saying and. You know, as old as in 2003, we had OnStar uh, navigational systems that are running on all those opening doors. It, it'd be treasure trove along with the uh, data from the, the mobile device. They better get on that For subpoena. Sure. She said busted. Right now. Because remember at trial, all that evidence, they had asked for it long ahead of time, but they got it during the trial or right before the trial. The defense almost got to keep it out. 
hey, word to the wise in Texas, Lana, Andy Kanye, you can pass this along. Get the NAV system information now. Bob Price, what can you tell me about text messages between Audrey's bio mom bio. and McDougal? Apparently, he was offering for the two of them to meet, stating that the little girl wanted to see her mom and coincidentally offering to meet at the spot by the river where the little girl was found. So, Audrey, I, I... Do you think he told her that? Because at first I didn't think that he, she even knew that, or, like, about the conversation at all. Like, I didn't think that Audrey knew. But maybe he did tell her, and maybe she thought that day that they were going to skip school and go see her mom. I've seen some of those posted on social media, and clearly he was trying to entice this mother uh, down to that river. Now, that raises the question that about when is the actual time of death for Audrey? Did, did he do something to her the night before and was trying to get the mom down there to do something with her as well. You know, there's a lot of things that could come into play here, but clearly he was trying to meet up with her and using Audrey as bait, if you will, to get her down there to meet, meet with and him. And he also we know from what the, kept stressing, don't tell anybody, quote, as long as no one says anything about it being set up, no one would even know. And she, Audrey, wouldn't say anything. And, and that's you know, that's the mo that this guy has. He he grooms people, family members, children, all of this. We know from what was said yesterday on the show that he assaulted a woman by groping her at a public party, a married woman, uh, just months before this. We know that he was at the birthday party of another 11-year-old child uh, just months before this happened. He's hanging around all of these types of people down there. This the father is has a criminal conviction for assault causing bodily injury. You know, maybe that's how they met somewhere. Are you saying but, Audrey's father has that conviction? Yes. So my speculation that they met in the penitentiary could be accurate. What's another thing that's very disturbing about these texts between Audrey's bio mom and the defendant, McDougal, is he is saying, I will take her to school and have you on the phone. I will take her to school tomorrow. This is Wednesday night. The next day is the day he was supposed to take her to school. Never had but whoops, she ended up without yeah. her pants dead in the river. And he's talking to the mom the following morning, the day of the murders. Good morning. They're still planning to meet up with the girl. And he says, have you, he says to her, have you seen Audrey? I dropped her off at the bus and she didn't get on and hasn't gotten home. That's after he ignored her call, like her text all morning. So I want to make that, I want to point that out. Cause so he was supposed to do a video call. Audrey's mom was smart and she was like, this is mess. This is going to mess up me getting my daughter back. Like I'm trying to move in the right direction to be able to be in my daughter's life. I shouldn't be doing this. And for her to say that, I mean, that takes a lot of guts. Like, I mean, cause you're online. You could just be like, yeah, let's meet. And then just be like, just kidding. I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? Cause it's the internet. Like people, I don't know. I just, people don't like to tell people no a lot. I feel like, um, but what was I was going to say, I forgot say something about him meeting her. I don't know. I have so to play lying in these texts to the mother. Oh, that's what it was. So when she was texting, she texts, she texts and she said like no video or something like that. And he didn't write her back for a while. And then she wrote him around, I don't know the time. I think it was between two o'clock, three o'clock. And she said, I guess I'm not getting like a video today. Like meaning like she knew she wasn't going to meet up with her because she was going to meet up with her unless she saw a video from Audrey say, or Audrey saying, um, yeah, I want to meet up with you, mom. And so I think he couldn't get the video because that's when he unalived her. Bob. Yeah, yeah, it's his stuff, lips are moving, yeah, him and Adam can hang out his together. Fingers are touching a keypad. He's lying, and, and very that's odd. Been consistent Jay. throughout this whole thing, uh, this whole area, the, the people in the courthouse told me that there there's 13 sex offenders that live within a, a very short radius of, of this house. Uh, this father and another father are exposing their children to these types of people on a regular basis. I got and, a and question these about a photo in for you. Situations. Uh, Lana Shadwick, uh, Chris McDonough joining us from the Cold Case Foundation. 
former homicide detective and host of the interview room on YouTube. I've seen photos of the dad who, according to Bob Price, has a conviction for assault. Was it ag assault or assault, Bob? Assault causing bodily injury, misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. Then they wouldn't have met in the pen. Maybe the county jail. Uh, but Lana and Chris, have you seen the photos of Audrey's dad with the defendant? And they look like they're at some outing. They're both wearing the same kind of bra handmade bracelet. They're clearly big friends. Have you seen? It says FRE on it. Yes, I've seen the photos, Nancy. Yes. Chris McDonough, the photo is of the defendant McDougal and Audrey's dad with whom she lived. They've got their arms around each other. All of his prison tattoos, his swastika, all that. Well, oh, he is the bolt They're right there. Hugging each other. Is that what these things are right here? That's what they look like. I don't know if that's what they are, but they look like those like lightning bolts that people put. And they're shooting, it looks like the AB, Aryan brother. Uh, but that said, they're wearing matching bracelets. What kind of bromance do they have? <laughs> Maybe they got them for the Taylor Swift tour. You know, that photo is, is obviously pretty disturbing, uh, Nancy. And for this dirt bag, in order for the state of Texas to, quite frankly, hang a millstone around his neck and toss him into the sea, I, I think it's important not only that they look at what we call suspectology and kind of dissect what his past is, but I think this case is going to revolve and, and end up, you know, balancing out on whether or not that child was alive when she was put into that water, because that opens up a now an investigation into other potential crime scene locations. Why the house, do the you car. think it all hinges on whether she's dead or alive? Yeah, that's the dad. He's a very small guy, I think. Dead now. Because because you ha you have the looks like very Dr. young. Morgan was talking about the chances of getting greater forensic and or circumstantial evidence to put this guy away uh, increase but when you have crime scenes that you can actually collect that type of evidence. Like, let's just use the cigarette butts for an example that he bought at the gas station. Where are those cigarette butts if he bought cigarettes? Uh, where is, you know, his air filter? Is is there evidence within cigarette that air butts filter out the that window. underneath that bridge through, you know, bringing well, in got, you know, hold, a hot Hold list. on, please, wait a minute. Sure. Chris McDonough. Cigarette butts, right? We have his pings placing him at the location where the child's body is found. We right. have him being the last one with her. Right. We have him and, stating and that's all great he evidence. had her in the car. So what did she do? Go tie a rock around her waist and throw herself off the bridge? No, no but that's there's all great evidence, evidence right now to convict him. Are you kidding me? You think we yeah, can't no, prove totally this agree. case without DNA? We can. DNA is just the icing like on the cake. What? Nancy, how would we, I know if I put a package in front of you in court, you would shred this guy. But how would you love to find semen in his truck where maybe that's where the sexual assault took place? Or I mean, semen, that's not going to do nothing but show that he, have you thought of semen in his own truck's only going to show that he was in his own truck, you know what I mean, with his self. That's Chris McDonough, Chris McDonough. Go, go sit down for a minute. <laughs> Joe Scott. Yeah, we, both. We, we stopped at the body. What about his clothing? Think, Steve, I thought so. I didn't know if that's what those were, though. You don't think about. there's any fibers from her on his clothing? No epithelial cells, no blood, no so nothing? Young. Hair. That, hair? Anything. What about it, Joe Scott? Help me out, brother. <laughs> It's possible that you could. Here's here's the problem. As admitted earlier, uh, you were talking. We drove uh, to school. One of the guests had mentioned how filthy he was and encrusted with all of this dirt. Uh, but yet he and, was clean at the gas station. Interesting. Go ahead. Uh, so we don't know what the status of the clothing are. Uh, is it possible that they could collect something from her, from this precious little angel that may have made its way onto him? Yes, that's within the realm of possibility, but we don't know how much due care was taken with those clothing if, in fact, they have collected those clothing from him 
or from wherever oh. he was domiciled at the time. Got something. What about the rope? The rope. I mean, Lana Shadwick, you're the high profile lawyer. Even a well, trash bag can be traced back to the lot, the, the, the group of trash bags that were created, manufactured at what plant, in what city, on what date. That's right. Yeah. That's same right. Thing and where it was paint. purchased. Yes. You think they can't do the same thing on rope? You think they can't match up? the rope and you know he cut it you think that somebody like joe scott morgan can't take the one end of the rope that was tied around her body and the other end of the rope that was in his car they already said it's the same rope and put it together and see forensically I, that they match perfectly i think he can i mean i'm he just can. a jd i'm not a crime lab scientist but even i can figure that out <laughs> Nancy, here's here's another beauty part to the rope, depending upon how well they treated it and they removed it from her body. Did you know that if she was tied up with that rope? Look at that picture, Ashley. It's uh, like he's staring at you. Prior to death, there's going to be evidence of that that you would not necessarily see with a postmortem tie up. So if she's got an abraded area that's got any associated hemorrhage with it or anything. That's an indication that she may have been alive. When she was tied up and secured. I got another idea for you. Jackie can hold up your note. I can't oh, take credit. It's Jackie's. Something about uh, the fact that he was clean at the gas station after he was filthy at the mechanics, depending on which was first, the chicken or the egg. Does that mean he then disposed of the body and was the body in the truck for disposal? I find it really hard to believe he'd stop at a gas station with a dead body in the car. That said, that means something. Lana Shadwick, I don't know what it means yet, it's, but I will well, find out what it means. It's, circum, it's circumstantial evidence and, and direct evidence of um, him being by the river or by the lake beyond the cell phone data and any video footage and that sort of thing. You've got him placed at a station where he's all clean hey, Lana. in the video. Lana, and then he's, he's tell me yeah. something I don't know. Tell me something. Okay. Can there be neglect charges or felony <clears throat> neglect charges, neglect that ends in death, filed against the father? That's a great question. And please don't everybody start screaming at me. You're blaming the victim. I am a crime victim. Okay. But I know All this right, girl so is dead. Injury to a child by negligence or omission. The felony one in the state of Texas. Well, this so fit that. You've got Pardon me? If the dad had knowledge of his record, could he be charged with felony neglect ending in death on a child? Certainly if he had okay. knowledge. But, but he, that's his father how could he not have daddy. knowledge? They got a bromance what? going on. That's right. Got the same headbands on. The same bracelet, the same headbands. Okay, Andy Kahn, in a nutshell, you know how I hate talking about legislation. Because of the Audrey case, what do you hope to achieve? I hope that we do end up bringing focus on offenders like McDougal, who somehow escape from having the label of sex offender on him. Maybe if he had to register back when he committed the offense of enticing a child in decency with a child, when he evidently was trying to sexually assault a 10 year old girl years ago, maybe that would have raised alarm bells at this time. Maybe the community would have known more about McDougal. Who knows? Maybe the parents, I don't know, but at least we would have known about his criminal history and his propensity to do sexual deviant acts around young girls. So what I hope to do next session is to take this case, make it a catalyst shell. for change. Make it a catalyst for change. Okay, hold on. I got it. Office. I got it. I got it. She don't need your you political know what estate. I hate Andy Khan. You know what I hate? Woulda. Yeah, broken woulda, promises. Yep. Shoulda. Yes, I want you to champion that, and I want it to pass. Maybe another little girl will be saved. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Can't bring Audrey Cunningham back. We wait as justice unfolds. Goodbye, friend.
Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. To get the very latest. Couldn't get back onto the screen fast enough. There's Nancy. Earlier, someone was like, you're, you're, um, you're talking like she's right there or something. I'm like, no, she is. She's staring. I was like, she's staring right at me. Because earlier I had a, the Nancy cardboard like right here. So she was literally staring at me. So if I talk like she's staring at me, it's because she's staring at me. Wow, they had a pretty big house. I didn't even, I don't even think I've even seen their house. Um, I don't think I've seen a picture of the house. Um, that is grandma, the, uh, that his mom and dad live in. Um, Joshua, her, uh, it would be Audrey's grandparents. I haven't seen their home. Um, I was, but what is what is this? Okay, wait, hold on. Hold on. He was caught on arraignment naked? Huh. Did you guys hear this? This just came out. 8.05 p.m. I didn't see this before the live. Jana gifted another five memberships. Look at Jana. Man, thank you so much. Thank you. I think that's like the most memberships I've been gifted by one person, except for that one person that came in here and gifted 20 memberships and then dipped out. And I don't know who that was. I still to this day don't know who that was. They never said hello. They never said goodbye. They came in, they threw memberships and they left. And I was like, wow. Yeah. So let me pull this up for you guys. Man, what? What is what? Okay. So he is going to try to play the crazy. Is he going to try to play the crazy card? Cause he was member. Um, so Audra's mom came out and said on Brooks's channel, crime lines and lies that, and we went over this interview, um, that he was acting crazy at the jail, like acting, trying to act crazy, like insane. He was like taking his feces and he's throwing it and doing all the things, all the things that you would do if you were trying to appear like you were crazy. So I guess this is, this is just going to be another part in his whole plan. So do you think, because I kind of thought maybe he would go away. Like maybe he would just plead guilty, go to jail, bye-bye. But now that I'm seeing this, I'm thinking, no, he's in it for the long haul. I mean, yeah, I just went to like, I just went to Google and was like, let me see if I can find anything else. And I was like, oh my gosh, I did. So, um, and it was like a picture of him, like blacked out. That's why I was like, what? Um, and I'll play the video after this. But says, video shows Audrey Cunningham's murder suspect, Don Stephen McDougal, naked during arraignment. Disturbing video from inside the Polk County Jail offers a glimpse of Don Stephen McDougall's actions after authorities charged him with Audrey Cunningham's murder. ABC 13 obtained the body-worn camera video by Polk County Sheriff's deputies as they pulled McDougall out of his jail cell for an arraignment in front of the Justice of the Peace. McDougall's arraignment was on Wednesday, February 21st. In the two-minute-long video, the most striking element is that he's not wearing any clothing. Oh my God, I'm so sorry to the judges, the bailiff, whoever had to see that. I'm so sorry, guys. Come on, JP wants to talk to you. A deputy says, where's your clothes? Hold on. I ain't got no clothes, McDougal says on the video. They probably, well, maybe they had him in um, his turtle suit and he decided to get out of it. Well, come on out here. Well, no, no, man. Come on, man. Don't disrespect me like that. Well, wrap up in that wrap up in the blanket. Come on, come on. The video plays out seemingly wearing a smirk. McDougal walks over to the justice of the peace with a blanket around his waist to hear the charges against him. You have the right to remain silent, not to make no statement at all. You know that anything you can can and will be used against you at trial in court. You have the right to an attorney present to advise you prior to or during a questioning. The justice of the peace says you have the right to determine to terminate any interview at any time. You have the right to examine the charges accused of a felony. Do you understand your rights, Mr. McDougal? Yep. He answers. Do you want a court appointed attorney or hire your own? Nope. <laughs> Which one? I'll get an attorney. Come on, pal. Your vehicle it wasn't, it's not even worth enough money to get an, a, an attorney for an hour with the charges that you're going, that you're charged with, bud. You're going to have to get a public defender and that's, a, and sorry. And just, just one. Don't, don't Sarah, Boon us. 
you're going to hire your own. All right. All I need to you for you to do is sign right here for me, your capital or charges, capital murder. That's no bond. The justice says. And with that, it was over the entire video lasting approximately just two minutes. As of Friday, McDougal remains behind bars, but publicly available records do not show whether he has an attorney. The next step should be an official indictment after the case is presented to a grand jury. And let's see what this video was up here. We'll watch this real quick. From inside the Polk County Jail, it gives us a glimpse of Don McDougal's actions after he was charged oh, with Don. killing Audrey Cunningham. The video shows McDougal as he is being arraigned on charges of capital oh, murder. Thank you, Elisa. Our Maya thank you so is now live with a video you will only see here on 13. Hey, Ivy. That's right. The video actually um, in the event, the arraignment happened on Wednesday, but we were just uh, given the video as of today. It was made available today and what's shocking as you will see in the video i think is really mcdougall's demeanor he seemed to be laughing at points and what's also shocking is he's not closed he actually faces an arraignment wearing nothing more than a blanket wrapped around his waist we got uh, Steve McDougal, Don McDougal. We're going to get him out to get a rain. As Polk County Sheriff's deputies opened the cell door, they were clearly shocked that Don McDougal, charged with the brutal murder of 11 year old Audrey Cunningham, had taken off all his clothes. Come on. So, JP hold on. Let's talk to you. Where's your clothes? All right. So, they don't have them in a turtle vest outfit or whatever that they normally will put you in that if you are suicidal. If you are, if you need to be watched, they take your shoestring that you don't get none of it. You don't get blankets. You don't get sheets. You don't get anything. You get this turtle vest suit thing. I mean, it literally just goes over your head and it just hangs. There's no arms to go through nothing. It just hangs over you. So he definitely had to have taken his clothes off and it looks like he took his clothes off and then he put the blanket back over him. Like he was waiting on the cops to come in so he could do that dramatic thing where he, you know, flows the, throws the blanket up. Crazy. Thank you, Ladybug, for the super sticker. Thank you for the 990 super sticker. You guys, you guys are tearing it up tonight. Thank you so much. Look at you guys showing up, showing out. So yeah, I, I, man, let's see what he looks like. Sorry, guys. Oh. I should be paying you to watch this. Well, put your smile on for now. Well, come on out here. Well, no, 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 man. You come on, man. Don't disrespect me like that. All right, well, wrap up in that. Wrap up in the blanket. Come on. Come on. McDougal, seemingly wearing a smirk on his face, walks over to the Justice of the Peace to hear the charges against him. You have the right to remain silent and not make any statement at all. I know that any statement that you make can will be used against you at trial and court. You have right to have an attorney present to advise her. No, we're sad. McDougal's currently facing woman there, you know? an assault charge in addition to the capital murder charge in the killing of little Audrey. This arraignment, though, is only for the capital murder charge. You have the right to terminate any interview at any time, and you have the right to examine charge if you're accused of a felony. Do you understand your rights, Mr. McDougal? Yeah. Okay. Do you want a court appointed attorney? You're going to hire your own. No. Which one? I'll get an attorney. You're going to hire your own? Yeah. Okay. All right, all I need you to do is sign right here for me. Your charge is capital murder and it's a no bond. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and with that, this entire interaction lasted less than two minutes. He went back to his cell, again, being held at no bond. The next step, we should see an official indictment once this case is presented to a grand jury. Public records do not indicate whether or not Magudo has so far hired an attorney. He can't afford an attorney. I can't afford an attorney. No one can afford an attorney. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have a lot of money or nothing, but you know what I mean? Like, McDougal's vehicle wouldn't even, that wouldn't even retain him an attorney for an hour if he got rid of his car. I know, Wes. Can you Im imagine him attacking her if, and it says, ain't scared across his chest? That's what, I feel like every night when I go to bed, I see that ugly ass tattoo. That ain't scared. Well, I am. Guess is what he's going for. Oh, there's so many. There's so many rumors, huh? Yeah, what's going on, Ivy? Oh, no. I didn't see that comment. What happened? Are you okay? Oh. Well, let me know if you need anything, Ivy. Let me know if you need anything.
Oh, no, Ivy. <laughs> lurker behind the knees. Like, there's my, there's my lurker. Thank you, Elisa. I appreciate you guys helping the channel. It really helps. I was wondering where you've been, Ivy. Yeah, can we send can we send him to another country? That's a good idea. Let's just send him away. Send him somewhere. We need like an island for all these people. Really, we do. We need a little island that they can hang out on. Um, let me see if there's anything else that was that's going to pop up. If I'm afraid to refresh the page now. Okay. Yeah, nothing. We, we got it all. I think we covered it all. So the next thing that will come out on this case will probably be just him going to court, I guess. Yeah. So um, if there's more, you know, whatever, if whatever comes out, we will make sure that we cover it. Um, we're in it. We're in it for the long haul. We cover, I I feel like we're the, we're the kids channel right now. I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, I don't like anybody being harmed, but it seems like lately it's more kids. More kids. Yeah, and email me, Ivy. Let me know what's going on. Oh, Tracy, yes. I know, and then you see your kids and they're all grown and you you feel bad because that little girl won't get that chance, you know? Hey, Amy, hook them in. Yeah, virtual hugs, Ivy. Nothing. There's nothing worse than when you're trying to like travel home and someone's messing with you too. You know, like I hate planes. I hate being on planes. Um, wasn't there? Oh yeah, there was something that happened on a plane the other night. Some guy, which you can't open the door from the inside of the plane, but I guess some guys like had to like overpower this guy. He was trying to open the door from the inside of the plane. Not very smart. So yeah, me too. I want to know why. Okay. So I want to know why Joshua and why, why his mother in particular, why those two have been so quiet, no searching, no interviews, no nothing, no nothing. That is suspicious to me. If you're a father, you would be there looking for her. It doesn't matter if, I mean, maybe you're on a boat. So if that's the, if that's the reason, then he's on a boat and he's coming home. But if he was a near there and he's not out there searching for her actively, then there's something wrong with that. Yeah, there are so. Oh, thank you. There are so many. Summer's case, I won't even. Oh, I'm scared to even touch that case because of all the, the craziness. I don't. I don't want to get involved in the craziness. But maybe that's a good thing. For me to, you know, a good reason for me to cover it because I haven't seen all the crazy. I haven't watched a lot of it, which is good, you know, because it's getting crazy. They had to have known Otto. They had to have known something. I mean, you don't, um, and I don't want to judge a book by his cover, but I'm going to. When you got AB tattoos on you, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to judge. If you have a small child, why would you, I mean, why would you put that into the, that person into the care of somebody that's a known felon, a known, I mean, I guess he wasn't a known predator, but should have been. They don't, yeah. They don't. Um, oh. Oh, I was trying to say he turned off the highway into the dirt road. Lots of trees. Yeah. That's everywhere around there. Summer's case is crazy. Yeah, is he still there, Ivy? Um, so Miss Bitchy, they, they didn't charge him with the crime with that crime. They did. They got him with enticing a child, but since it was such as like a low tier, I guess on the totem pole, which there should be no low tier for that kind of stuff. He didn't have to register. He didn't have to put his name on the registry list. So I bet Ivy has a gun. She looks like she's the type. <laughs> you do look like the type Ivy. You look like you don't take no, you don't take no bull crap though. That's all he got. That's all he got was enticing a child. And enticing a child is just getting the child to do something away from the parent. That That is not what happened there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they haven't helped. They haven't helped. They haven't thanked. Nothing. Wonder. 
maybe Halo Art, Art Crafts and um, Crime Chat. Yeah, for sure. I love that. I love that name. Then swim to shore. I love doing crafts, but I'm not good at them. But I like watching. I like being like, I'm going to go do that. And then I'm like, I start to do it. And then Vincent comes in. He's like, I'm going to take over. And I'm like, he's going to do that. <laughs> we do not need to jump into the oh, phrase. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah, that's whist. I think you have a valid point. Hmm. Yes, exactly. A uh, little patty. I know. I was like, what's the guy trying to do? But I guess like he was trying to open the plane door and then people jumped on him. And but I mean, people are going to jump on you if you try to do anything crazy on a plane now. If you look, if you look sideways, you know, the wrong way, which they should. Yeah, I don't know why the prosecuting attorney was okay. Yeah, that's a you know, and I think that those people need to be held accountable too. I even said that the judges, everybody, like we we really, we really we need to do better. Oh yeah, order order food. That's a good idea. You're still working with creating the channel. Well, I think the name is good. Well, you have to start with a name. I didn't start with a name. That was my problem. I started with the channel, and yeah, it, I don't know. Why I did that. <laughs> we do. There is a hand sign, but I don't know what it is. I should know that. Oh, Charlotte. That's so nice. I love this chat. Y'all, that's why I'm here every night. Because you guys. You guys, that's so sweet. Charlotte's like, where do you live? Oh, what state? I'll come. I'll come there. I, man, you guys are really sweet. Man. Now, if I go missing, you guys are the people that I want looking for me. No true crime creators, though. Just y'all. Just y'all. No true crime creators, though. They all be, it all be crazy. Yeah, I I think the I think the order in the pizza is a good idea. And then, or just call the police out and be like, "This dude's in my parking lot and he won't leave." Because you know, because um, sometimes you might be like, "Well, he's just sitting out there; he's not bothering me." You know what I mean? But you never know. <laughs> Lisa, well, when I become president, she is going to change. I love that. I love that. Yeah, email me if you need anything, Ivy. I know, isn't that sweet, Ivy? That's really nice. She said, I live in Wesley, Chaplin, Florida. Thank you, Titans. This means the world to me, having people that care for me. Well, we do care. That's, what, that's what's so good about this chat. I love this chat. Like, you guys are really, you guys are genuinely good people. Genuinely good people. And it's, and I'm not saying that other people in other chats aren't genuinely good people at all. I'm not saying that at all. But it's hard to find a chat anywhere on this platform because I go in and I lurk and I, I look, you know, um, where you don't like have the chat. Like if you're talking about like, you know, a, a big case where it's not flooded with like, you know, um, people just with the, you know, the trolls, I guess, of the YouTube streets. But I guess you like, I don't know. I guess you only have trolls if you I don't know. I, we don't ever have them ever since September. I can count on one hand how many people came in here off the cuff. And it was always an Idaho stream. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know what happened over here, but it was like, when I went on vacation, y'all went with me or something. But um, thank you guys for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. If you need me, Ivy, email me. I'll be up for a little while longer. I'll be up for a while. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow. So tomorrow on the live, we're going to do, I think Delphi, because we haven't touched on that case in a while. And I know if we don't do it tomorrow, we'll do it on Sunday. And I want to do the Chelsea Grimm stream still too. So I still have that posted for Sunday night, but I'm going to, um, if I need to make it like on Monday, we might just schedule it out one more day, but probably not. Cause I really, really, really want to get back onto that case. Um, are you kidding? Wow. I just went to the other tab and Dietz is still live. She's been live for seven hours. Deets on the streets. I don't know if you guys watch her, but she's awesome. Um, but she's been live for seven hours. I'm like, oh my gosh, shoot. Um, so if you need something to watch, she's over there gossiping about something good. <laughs> but thank you guys for being here tonight. I appreciate you. Um, I will see you guys all tomorrow on the live. Um, and hopefully I'll have my sign up. You know, my titanium built sign. Remember that sign we have? I'm going to try to get Vincent to put that up tomorrow. 
I'm going to beg him. I'm going to be like, come on, Vincent. No, he'll do it. I just always give him other jobs to do. <laughs> but um, so hopefully by tomorrow night, I'll have my sign behind me again because I really miss it. I miss the light. And I think, I think Nancy misses it too. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget, if you don't mind, just hit the like button. I know I say that a lot. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for the memberships tonight and the super stickers, Ladybug, Elisa. Thank you guys so much. And Jana, you gifted out 15 memberships tonight, girl. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. It does really help the channel grow. Um, and it helps the content creator more. And I love that we have more members. I love members. So thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys all tomorrow on the live. Have a great evening or a great weekend if I don't see you before then. Bye, guys.